Hey everyone, I'm Ashes. And I'm Will. And, and this, this is, is Ashes, Ashes and, and Will Do Disney. Disney. Each week, one of us will tell the other the history, facts, and stories behind the rides and attractions of Disney that have made special memories for generations. Keep in mind that Ashes and Will Do Disney is not affiliated with or employed by the Walt Disney Company, and our views and opinions do not reflect theirs. Now it's time to sit back, relax, and put on your ears, because it's time for Ashes and Will Do Disney. How's it going, Will? Pretty good, pretty good. Rolling into episode four, going strong here. Uh, I'm pretty excited because it's not too long ago that we just started talking about doing this, and I can't believe that we've actually, like, dived in and got it going, and, like, it's a real thing now. Like, we did this. I feel like we got it up and running pretty quickly, too. I am pretty proud of us. Like, I think this is pretty awesome. I'm having fun with it. I hope... A few people are enjoying listening to it, but I do enjoy it. It's fun. It's fun. So last week we did the character trivia. Yes. You have more trivia for me this week? I do have more trivia for you this week. So do you want two choices again this time? Yeah. What are my choices? Okay. So my ride that I'm covering comes from Walt Disney World. So I'll give you the choice of Walt Disney World trivia or since you were a history major, history trivia oh i'm gonna go with the walt disney world trivia oh chickening out i am i'm chickening out (laughs) i'm gonna check it out on this one okay walt disney world trivia what disney's enchanted tiki room oh i'm sorry (laughs) walt disney's enchanted tiki room at magic kingdom park is introduced by clyde and who else I don't know his name. Gigi, Claude, Colette, or Mimi? Let's go with Gigi, though. We've never done Tiki Room. No. It was Claude. (sighs) Clyde and Claude. So down one already. Down one already. El Rio del Tiempo was the original name of the attraction located in the Mexico Pavilion. What does El Rio del Tiempo mean? Oh, river of the Temple, or Temple of the River. Uh, so there's River of the Three Caminheros, River of History, River of Time. River of Time. Okay. Tiempo's Time. I, I misheard what you said. It's River of Time. Tiempo. Yeah. Uh, my Spanish is not good. Sorry. That's okay. Fun fact. The attraction has since been reimagined as Grand Fiesta Tour, starring the Three Caminheros, which takes you on a journey with... Panchito and Jose as they search for Donald Duck. Fun times. The girls would love that because we watch that show on Disney+. Plus. We'll have to check that out. Who is the youngest of the seven dwarves? I didn't even know there were different ages. (laughs) I I just kind of assumed they were all the same. What are the choices? Happy, sneezy, dopey, or sleepy? I guess I'm going to say dopey. I would have guessed sleepy, but dopey's right. Hooray! True or false? In 2018, Donald's Dino Bash featured appearances by the beloved Daisy duo, or I'm sorry, Disney duo Chip and Dale. I feel like that's true with how much they interacted in the cartoons. It is true. Hooray! Fun fact. That's right. In addition to appearances by Donald, Daisy, Goofy, Pluto, and Launchpad McQuack, <laughs> Donald's Dino Bash also featured Chip and Dale in the all-new Dino-inspired costumes. Have, did you... I've never heard of that. Okay, I was like, I have no clue what this is. But good job. What type of animal will you not encounter inside the temple during the Jungle Cruise? Spider, cobra, elephant, tiger. It's a spider. Nope. <sighs> elephant. I just figured spiders are more geared towards the Indiana Jones ride. Well, it says inside the temple. I don't think they're going to put an elephant inside the temple. You never know. I mean, valid. You never know. But you've gotten too wrong now. Too wrong. Too wrong. With the ability to hold up to 350 guests, 
what's the name of the venue in the France Pavilion that provides a cinematic tour of France? Oh, what are the choices? I haven't been to Epcot in such a long time. And the last time we were there, we didn't go through the part of things. No, we didn't. So this is, there's a whole lot in Epcot that we have to explore. Right. Magic Eye Theater, American Gardens Theater, Temple of Heaven, or Palais du Cinema? The last one. Correct. Yes. You picked the only French one. The so one good French job. choice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fun fact the film Impressions de France is projected on five screens standing 27.5 feet tall by 21 feet wide, covering a field of vision of 200 degrees. Mm. Kind of cool. That is cool. Which important Navi personality do you encounter on Navi River Journey? Navi Hunter, Navi Tour Guide, Navi Shaman of Songs, or Navi Clan Leader? I'm going to say the Shaman of Songs. Correct. I've never been to that land, but that just sounds like it makes the most sense based on yep. the theme of everything. Fun fact, the Navi Shaman of Songs is capable of creating unique music through the natural energy of Pandora, the world of Avatar, which I'm super excited to go see now that we finally saw that movie. Now that we finally watched the movie. That took us a long time to watch. We've owned that movie for years I know. and just now watched it not that long ago on Disney+. Plus. Yeah, and I mean, we knew we loved the movie, and we did. It's visually <laughs> a very cool movie. Well, the story was cool, too. I really liked it. Okay, what character is not found in Mickey's Philharmagic? Lumiere, Zazu, Woody, or Flounder? It's been a long time since we've seen. I haven't done Philharmagic in a long time. Yeah. Like it may have been after we got married was the last time I saw that. That's kind of what I'm thinking. What were the choices again? Lumiere, Zazu, Woody, or Flounder? I'm going to say Woody. Yes, correct. That would have been my only guess just because he's like the newest And he's the only Pixar character. choice too. Yeah. Cementosaurus, the massive dino at Chester and Hester's Dino-Rama, is truly a sight to behold. What color is he currently painted? Choices. <laughs> Red and blue, green and yellow, cyan and magenta, and black and white. I bet I might know this answer. I'm not sure about this one because I don't know that I've been there. So they're going to celebrate their, well, Animal Kingdom hasn't been around for 50 years, but Walt Disney World Mm -hmm. is celebrating their 50-year anniversary, and they're kind of decorating with a theme. Do you know what one of those colors are? I don't. I think they're doing some, like, golden magenta, so the cyan and magenta would be my guess, but I I have no clue. I'm going to go with cyan and magenta, too, just because that sounds the most unique to me. Well, we were wrong, so bummer. (laughs) It's green and yellow. That was what I was going to say as the basic choice, but I thought it was too basic, so that's why I went a little more complicated and intricate. I threw it off. Okay, and last question. Be Our Guest Restaurant serves what delicious treat from Beauty and the Beast? Oh, I totally know this one. Well, what are my choices? Churro, Matterhorn Macaroon, Cinnamon Rolls, The Gray Stuff. I'm going to say the gray stuff. Yeah, try the gray stuff. Yeah. It's delicious. See, so good job. 80%. Not bad. Oh, not. You got 70%. What other one did you get wrong? No, oh, no, I did miss three. Okay, well, you missed three. Okay, so I am going to tell you a story today. What do you have for me today? Okay. What is one of my other favorite rides? Not... Haunted Mansion, this this ride makes my top five. Okay? Soarin' is what I would guess. It's not Soarin'. Oh. Not Tower of Terror. It's a ride that typically only has a wait of like five minutes. But it is literally one of my absolute favorite rides. I have no clue. Oh, well, I'm disappointed. Well, you named off like five rides and you're still like, this is one of my favorite rides. It is one of my favorite rides. Soren, I don't know. Well, Soren's up there, but okay. We rode that like 10 times on our honeymoon. I know. I like it. But our honeymoon was in Disneyland. Yes. 
I said this rides in Walt Disney World. So is Soren. It's only in Walt Disney World. Oh, okay. Specifically Epcot. The Spaceship Earth? Nope. Okay, let's just go ahead and tell okay. me what it is. It's then. Living with the Land. Oh, okay. Yeah, that is a good one. I know. A little sad. Well, you know my love. I even, so Living with the Land sells those little plants that you can bring home. And yes. I tried to bring one home and it totally died again. We talked about we your talked lack about of green it. thumb in hey, the last episode. it's not a lack of. There's a learning curve. I try real hard. I love plants. <laughs> Anyways, you know, my first uh, two degrees, biology and chemistry. Mm-hmm. So I I do. My heart has a special place for plants and sciencey things. And of course, Epcot embodies that and specifically living with the land does. Yeah. Um, it's absolutely one of my favorites. There's never a long wait, which makes it even better. It's so a very I, relaxing ride, too. It is. So I wanted to look into that one a bit. Sounds good. So Living with the Land was originally known as Listen to the Land and debuted with Epcot Center on opening day on October 1st, 1982. The attraction closed for refurbishment in 1993 and reopened the same year with a new name, Living with the Land. So it is. It's a nice kind of, it's a good ride for when you're like, cool, it's hot out. I need to sit for a few minutes. (laughs) There's no wait over here. It's a 14 minute long, slow moving boat ride. It goes through three different biomes. There's the tropical rainforest, the desert, and the prairie. So it was originally developed as a suspended dark ride called Blueprints of Nature. So that's one of those, you know, ones that didn't quite make it off the drawing board. So this was going to be traveling underground to a carousel theater pre-show. Guests would be introduced to the landkeeper, the attraction's host. From there, the landkeeper would take guests on a hot air balloon trip through the four seasons in a series of simulated biomes located in greenhouses at the front of the pavilion. These plans would be scaled back when Kraft came aboard as a sponsor and the attraction would become a boat ride. The greenhouse portions of the pavilion would become focused on showcasing new agricultural techniques while the dark ride portion would become the simulated biome portion. So kind of evolving and changing what this ride was to what it became. I mean, if it was originally going to be a hot air balloon ride, that's probably the closest you'd get me to a hot air balloon. It's one that's simulated. (laughs) I don't know. Even that might be a little bit hard. I could probably deal with it at least once. Okay. The dark ride portion of the attraction opens up with a scene of deciduous forest in the middle of a thunderstorm, illustrating how the forces that shape the land can appear destructive to us. The boat then sails through the artificial biomes representing a tropical rainforest, a desert, and the American prairie. Some of the audio animatronic figures in this section were originally created for the never built magic kingdom attraction western river expedition so this probably would have gone i'm assuming in um frontier land probably with that name yeah but instead of opening western river expedition they actually opened pirates of the caribbean instead that's a good choice so probably yeah a good choice the biome features sounds and lightning effects in addition to heat, wind, mist to simulate real conditions. The second part of the attraction takes place in the land's living laboratory, which showcases ideas about the future of agriculture. So the whole point that they're trying to get through this is they want to make you believe that you can do it. Like that was what their goal in mind was opening this ride is they want people to think like you can do it. You can make a difference. You can grow these plants, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's supposed to be an inspirational ride. That was kind of the idea behind Epcot as it was, was to give people information and kind of build this new way of living in society. That was the original idea of Epcot. It has the very like quintessential Epcot vibe to it. And it's, a ride basically anybody can ride. Mm-hmm. 
a couple fun facts about it. It has a tribute to 1982. So at the start of the ride, you float on the boat through various scenes. One of the scenes is a farm scene with a cute little house and fields of corn all at sunset. It's very pretty. Very pretty. If you look at the mailbox on the house, you'll see it says number 82 on it. And that's a nod to Epcot's opening, which happened in 1982. Right. Disney loves to throw in all those little details little i think Easter it's really eggs. fun yeah so at that farmhouse they also have a dog do you know whose dog it is i don't it's walt disney's dog oh yeah so he's the same dog that you see in scenes throughout the carousel of progress and it's the same dog that's holding the keys in the pirates of the caribbean that does make sense. Now that you've said it, I'm picturing the dog yep. and it is the same dog throughout. Yeah, I know. I didn't realize it. So it's because it was modeled after Walt Disney's very own dog. Well, that's nice. So Living with the Land also holds the world record for the most tomatoes produced from one single tree. That is the one thing that actually does stick out to me. I do remember that from the ride as the tomatoes. Yeah. So it's, I think it's awesome. The tomatoes grown in Epcot, Epcot broke the world record for the most tomatoes harvested from a plant within a year. 32,194 tomatoes were harvested between May 2005 and April 2006. The combined weight for the year weighed 1,151.84 pounds. That's a lot of tomatoes. That's a lot of tomatoes. Living with the Land is also notorious for all their little hidden Mickeys that they have um, throughout the ride. And where the, you know, where the like fish are mm -hmm. and like they've got some shrimp and stuff. They right. have wire circles in there. Um, they often make the garden hose in the shape of a Mickey. Kind of like when we went to Magic Kingdom and they did the rope. With the rope. Mm-hmm. Do you so, know what the criteria for a hidden Mickey? No. The ears have to be proportionate and it has to be intentional. So they couldn't have just put something down that happens to look like Mickey and, oh, there's a hidden Mickey. It has to intentionally have been put there and the ears have to be proportionate. Hmm. Good to know. Our kids love looking for hidden Mickeys. I swear it's one of everywhere. literally everywhere. If it's three things put together that kind of resemble circles. If they're circles. Yeah, they're like hidden Mickey. <laughs> Which I love. I absolutely love that about I them. I know. I do too. It's so cute. And it kind of keeps the magic alive. So there's also something pretty important, though, to growing food that is missing from this ride. Can you guess what it is? Do you know what a lot of plants need to grow? Well, sunlight, water, and oxygen. Well, they got that all there. Fertilizer. <laughs> <laughs> so they need to be pollinated and do you know how oh, plants are pollinated out bees. in nature bees so they didn't want to have thousands of bees swarming around with people in boats going through i know bees are great but i would not go on if there were a whole bunch of bees exactly around. and i mean really honey bees aren't typically one to go stinging people However, it's a risk. It's still a risk and they didn't want that. So scientists spend about 15 hours per week pollinating the plants. So it's done by hand essentially by done people. Done by hand. Wow. So you know how your ultimate like dream job goal is just to work anywhere for Disney? Just to do something for Disney. I'm pretty sure I have now decided that I just want to go work in Epcot and living with the land. I will water plants and hand pollinate trees and I, it will be Disney and plant magic. It, that to me, I feel like would probably be my dream come true. It'd be a good conversation starter too at parties asking what you do for a living and oh, I pollinate plants. Yeah, exactly. See? So I'm well aware that living with the land isn't exactly the most thrilling ride out there. So clearly I was like, let me find something to spice this episode up a little bit. Like, let me just go see what I can find. So I go down this little Google rabbit hole of living with the land, and I stumble upon a Reddit post okay. that Reddit's I want to read. Reddit's always a good spot to find something interesting. It is interesting for sure. 
The title of it is, I was an undercover security officer at Walt Disney World. I found their darkest secret. Ooh, scandalous. So I'm going to read you what the post said now. Okay, it says, good morning. I am writing this on my phone, so please have patience with any grammatical or formatting errors. This post got removed originally, and I messaged the mods. They said they had no idea how it happened, but I have been finding small silhouettes of Mickey Mouse outside of my house. Here's the repost, and an update is in the works. To start off with, I now reside in a completely different state after leaving my job with the Walt Disney World Resort in Orlando. I used to be one, one of the Redditor, what Reddit described as a suit. I am one of the guys that, that walks around the park in plain sight yet hidden to the public. I am part of the elite group of black polo sporting undercover security officers that specialize in the worst things or specialize in worse thing than shoplifters and unruly park guests. You see, as stated prior to this post on the no sleep feed, I guess, whatever you call it in Reddit, if you are at Walt Disney World and you more than a few, and you see, that's sorry, he did have an ear there. I was tripping up over it. <laughs> if you are at Disney World and you see more than a few guys in one place wearing black polos, then you are most likely in danger and you should leave the area immediately. Wow. I feel like this isn't so undercover anymore now. I know. I was like, I want to pause and be like, did you, have you ever heard of like undercover securities officers, black polos, Disney World? I mean, I haven't. So, I mean, I actually do appreciate him letting me know that if I see a bunch of them, I should probably get out of the area. I know. I'm like, is this true? Is this really a thing? Like, because... Yeah, now I feel like we're going to go, and I'm going to be like, there's a guy in a black polo. Granted, it's Florida. Like, who wears a black polo? But still. The sad part is, we are so good at blending in with the woodwork that you wouldn't have even noticed us. Anyways, let me cut to the chase here. I have seen some pretty weird things at Disney World during my time. These anomalies, quote-unquote, that everyone speaks of, well, they are true, but the least of our concerns. See, the thing is, when you take hundreds of thousands of people and cram them into a relatively small space, weird stuff is going to happen. We have had kids, even adults, get lost in the park, cryptozoological sightings, alien sightings, ghost sightings, and just generally unexplainable things happen all the time. Okay, so obviously I've heard ghost stories about Disneyland, Disney World, but cryptozoological creatures, like someone saw Bigfoot in the park? I don't know, but I swear to you, that is on my list of things of rabbit holes to jump down we have after to dive this. Into that. Because clearly I'm like, what? what is happening here? <laughs> so don't worry, at some point this will happen. I was a senior special security officer during my during the height of my time there and got called for some pretty dark stuff many of you think we as in the security detail i was in were covering up for the disney corp but in our true nature we were damage control and we were kept out of the loop on things and we were trained not to question but to diffuse there was one thing though that to this day still bothers me a cast member called us on the next tell to report that a group of four children had gone missing on the land. Of course, I thought, one another one of those anomalies. For those of you who don't know the eerily calming nature of the ride called Living with the Land, it is located in the Land and Sea Pavilion over by Soren, and the odd thing about this report is that we have never received one of the one of these complaints before. And of course we are issued cover-up stories to tell cast members or guests to calm them down. My colleague calmly came up with a story and explained that the kids were part of an educational program and they exited the boat with a guide and were escorted into the botany lab that exists on the ride. I told her not to ask any questions or talk about the incident as not to spread, quote, false rumors, unquote, and had my colleague escort her to a nearby security office to have her sign some forms. My human nature took over and I got curious and entered the ride on the next boat alone. 
Living with the land is boring and not particularly popular, so I can understand how the kids would be on the boat alone and I, and also how I could get on and off the boat myself. I noticed absolutely nothing until I came to the part of the ride that has the prairie farmhouse. It looks like a faux house, but something about it just never sat right with me. As I have done hundreds of times before on rides, I jumped off the boat and onto the scene where the house is. I noticed something funny though. There were no pressure mats and the boat went away, allotting about a good 30 seconds before the next boat got to the scene. I have never seen a ride with no pressure mats to detect if anyone disembarks the ride. I didn't know that pressure mats were a thing, so... Hey, you would think it would be a thing, though, because you see videos all the time of people, like, getting off the rides. Like, someone dropped their phone on the Matterhorn once or Big Thunder Mountain and got off, so it stopped the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, it totally makes sense. Again, things we just never noticed before. You just don't pay attention to it. Yeah. So, quick recap. Kids disappear on the ride. I show up, feed the cast member who reported it some story about how they disembarked mid-ride and are on a tour of the lab and for her not to question it. Colleague of mine takes her away to debrief. I contact the new cast member operating the ride and tell him to put some space between the next boat as I am looking for a lost wedding ring. Bull, I know, but so what? I slowly start to walk up to the faux house. Climbing the steps up to the porch, I notice a small emblem on the left window. It's a small square in a compass symbol. Interesting that a Masonic symbol is hidden here. I figured whoever built the ride was a Freemason and brushed it off. Makes sense. I looked in the windows of the house and it was nothing but curtains with black plywood behind them. I thought that there was nothing to see here, but still something inside me decided that wasn't good enough. The front door glided open to a bright room with a black and white checkerboard floor. There was a marble altar-like table on the opposite end of the room with some kind of weird throne-like chair built into the front of it and a gold cup on the top of the table. The only other thing that was noticeable was a heavy wooden door on the other end of the room that was locked. There were no windows or anything else. I thought I was weird. I th- I'm guessing he meant to say I thought it was weird because I was always under the impression that this house was fake. Human nature took over again and against my better judgment, I tried the door in the room, but I was relieved that it was locked. I tried my keys, but none of them worked. Here's the thing. At Disney, we use a lock system called BEST. This has interchangeable cores that have assigned numbers and or letters. This is so we can issue keys only to certain areas. I have the general master key, which essentially is the real key to the kingdom. Interestingly, the thing about this lock is that my master didn't open it. I looked closer and it was a best lock, but the inscription said, quote, CC on it, which I'd never seen before. Since the door wasn't open, I decided to just leave. On my way out, I noticed on the floor there was a fast pass printed out for Soren. I picked it up and pocketed it. It was amazing how trash works its way into odd places. I'm going to figure out where these kids went. I rode the boat back out of the platform and went back to the Epcot security office to play back some footage from the DVR. It took me a while, but I zeroed in on the period where the kids entered the land and sea pavilion and followed them. There were four kids total, three girls and one boy. The girls' actions were almost robotic and it sent a chill up my spine. They walked in a straight line through the pavilion, but what scared me was there was a man with them escorting them through the place. Oh no. I paused and looked closer when I realized the man was wearing 
a black polo and khakis. The same thing I was wearing. Oh, man. I even recognized him. It was one of my colleagues. Alan is the guy that was at the scene before I got there. The same guy who fed the cast member at the control podium the story about the kids going on a tour. I thought maybe he did actually send them on the tour of the botanic lab and lost track of them until I hit play on the film. The boy was not walking in line and I could tell he was giving Alan problems. He keeps venturing away and getting distracted by various things in the pavilion. The benefit of the doubt I gave Alan subsided when I saw the kids the kid go press the button for the fast pass on Soren and take the paper fast pass almost like a prize. Alan then tugged him away and stood back and observed as the kids walked to the living with the land. I saw them get on the boat. I saw them through the storm scene, through the rainforest scene, then through the desert scene. After the desert, I lost the boat on camera. The ride stops momentarily. You could see it on the other scenes. And once it resumes, I saw the boat again in the scene with the picture of the farmers. The boat was empty. I also saw Alan looking down off the observation deck, which explains how he responded so quickly. I switched the cameras back to live view and left that area. I haven't exactly been honest with you thus far. I know a lot of things of what Disney does and things that we respond to that a regular security officer wouldn't deal with. I have seen them experiment so many things such as eugenics, pharmaceutical engineering, and even experimenting with gas. Have you ever noticed that on both Spaceship Earth and the monorail that you get a strange calm feeling on those rides? Well, they are pumping low doses of laughing gas in those areas. Ever heard of Room Zero? They were wearing gas masks for a reason. Ever hear of gaskets? Well, they're not important right now. I would encourage you to research it, which I have not. I've not heard of that. I have never thought that what we did was okay by containing these dark secrets, but it paid well. I have seen them quickly inject some experimental drug on guests and throw them back out there. Our job was to monitor and contain them if things went haywire. I know that I am the bad guy, but this wasn't normal. This was procedural. First thing I did was go over to the room where we kept the keys. I looked through the log books for the core labeled CC. I found it, but it had no zone or specific location issued to the core, and the number of copies was marked as one. This key was in our system, but my master key didn't open it. I grabbed the core key and a few zone one cores. The core key is a specific key that when inserted to the lock will remove the core so that it can be replaced with another. I put this in my pocket and made a beeline for the land and sea pavilion. I may be paranoid, but I swear I saw Alan following me in the shadows. I got to the ride and got to the house and back in front of the door to the Masonic room and locked the front door as I entered. I inserted the core key into the lock on the wooden door, removed the core, and inserted the zone one core into the lock. Now my master key will open the door, and boy did it. The door glided open. It was heavy and steel on the other side of the wood face. There was a velvet red carpeted staircase leading down to some kind of utilidor, but we are in Epcot. What? There is a, one small utilidor in Epcot, but it doesn't go this deep. I descended the stairs and walked down the red carpeted hallway to these two double doors. Behind these doors was my answer and the truth as to what happened to these kids. Through these doors was the darkest side of Disney, a side of Disney 
that I even couldn't believe. Would Walt be in favor of this? Or is this one of Eisner's little ideas to make more money off of his guests? Behind these doors was an empty, dimly lit room with a small circular platform in the center. The carpet was the same lush red velvet carpet from the hallway. There were six leather armchairs around the circular platform, all with telephones and card readers on the table next to the chair. Inside, I knew what was going on. I knew what was happening there. This is one thing I will not cover up for the Disney Corp. I stood there in disbelief and horror and noticed the small door towards the back of the room. I went over and popped out the CC core, put it in my pocket, and put in a Zone 1 core. I heard someone clear their throat from the front of the room. It was Alan. He had an annoyed look on his face and held a gun trained at me. What? I slowly propped the door open on the latch and turned to face him. You never should have come here, he said to me when he was stepping towards me. So this is what you and your scumbag friends resorted to? We did some pretty messed up stuff, Alan, but this is a whole new low for you and your disgusting friends. I had my hand at my side and blocked the view of me slipping the Zone 1 core out of the handle and into my pocket. It's not going to matter because no one is going to find out. He raised the gun like something out of an action movie. I ripped open the door as he pulled the trigger as the bullet hit the door. (laughs) That's very harrowing. I know. I jumped backwards through the doorway and shut it behind me. That guy was stuck in there because I had both cores in my pocket, so there was no way he could open the door. He started shooting the door and I moved forward. I walked down a hallway with these small cell-like rooms lining the hall and inside were those play school chairs and a few toys. I checked every one of them and they were all empty. I got to the end of the hall and there was this huge metal vault-like door. I popped the last zone one core into the door to replace the CC core and pulled the steel door open to be hit in the face with sunlight. I was outside on some side utility road off premises of Epcot. The road led away. I was too late. They were already gone for good. I called the police, but they never came. I called the FBI, but they never took me seriously. I even called the CIA but they said they didn't deal with domestic issues like that and referred me back to the FBI. I showed up at the Orange County Police Department headquarters and they took a report, but I heard something fall in the trash when I was leaving. Disney is good at what they do. (laughs) They're good at keeping secrets. They're good at controlling any outside force that attempts to bring their secrets to light. I am lucky I saw the sunlight again. I am lucky to have had time to leave the state before they got me. If you go there, please keep your kids close. Watch out for the guys in black polos. They may be monitoring you. They may be responding to something that will put you in danger. As far as I know, they aren't the ones that picked out the merchandise. I don't even know who does that. So... What do you think? He had he links a couple pictures, but it's just pictures of like the house and um, you know, nothing crazy where the cameras point on the ride, stuff like that. So this started off as a very intriguing story, like what happened to these kids. And then it just got real outlandish. It took like a big step left. It just seems like it's a little too much. Yeah. Yeah, this big old conspiracy of kidnapping kids essentially and his co-worker has a gun to him and no one heard this gun firing in this this house well on i the mean ride. but they were way far down some hall and, <laughs> <laughs> and there's the fact too that he's like oh i went to the police but they threw it away immediately no that didn't happen that's it just seems a little too outlandish it started off as like a missing kid story that took a turn to the almost american horror story-esque type of 
Yeah, tale. there was some naughty words in there, but I figured um, I wouldn't read those. Edit those out, sure. <laughs> I sure. Edit those yeah. out. I, I just, I don't know how much of it I actually buy. I can tell you, though, I probably won't ever ride that ride again without looking at the house, the farmhouse, a little house when differently. We go next. <laughs> so. I just have a feeling, though, in my mind that if you were to open that door, it is a faux house and there's really nothing in there. Hey, he talks about, too, like, thank goodness I got out of the state before they could find me. Well, I mean, if they've got the FBI, the CIA, and the police all in their back pocket, they're going to find him in another state, especially if he's popping on Reddit and running his mouth about it. I mean, I'm sure, but it really did make living with the land far more interesting. It made it a much more exciting episode. I'll give it that. Yeah, I just, it was not expecting, it was not what I was expecting to find when doing research for this episode. I was actually at work when I had found it, and I'm sure the looks on my face were just absolutely ridiculous because I was like, what is happening? And then it was so hard to come home and not get to tell you about that creepy (laughs) story. I mean, I was expecting that Alan was a jerk and he was doing something he shouldn't have been doing, and that was horrifying in and of itself. But then just the direction that story took, like, is Alan even a real guy? I don't know. I mean, I wasn't planning on just letting our children run loose in Epcot, but, you know. And I guess that just reinforces we shouldn't let our kids just run wild in Disney World. I know, but I'm sure going to look out for some guys in black polo shirts. I'm going to keep an eye out for guys in black polo shirts and khakis and see if I notice it. Okay, listeners, if you've ever seen a guy in a black polo shirt at Disney, let us know. Remember, ashes and will do Disney at gmail.com. Send it to us for those mouse tails. Yeah, or comment on our Facebook page, something. I'm just curious to see, like, I don't know. I've never been much for, like, a whole lot of conspiracy theories. Me neither. And I think why people get so calm on Spaceship Earth is because it's cool and dark and quiet. And nobody actually really cares about the ride. They're just happy to sit down for a few minutes. It's air conditioned. <laughs> air conditioning. And it's dark. Yeah. So, yeah. I just thought I'd throw in that fun little story. Though. That was fun. That was crazy. That's it for this week's episode of Ashes and Will Do Disney. Don't forget, we need your mouse tails. If you have a funny, weird, exciting, or just a favorite Disney memory, send it to ashesandwilldodisney at gmail.com so we can read them on the show. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Ashes and Will Do Disney. This is a public group to follow. We're also on YouTube at Ashes and Will Do Disney. Please subscribe, rate, and review wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thank you so much for listening, and have a magical day!